My name's Grumpy Jesse, and I don't want any more friends. I don't want to be your friend, okay? Do we have that clear? No more friends. If you don't like bacon, you're not my friend. I like to burn my bacon, do you? Okay, good morning guys. Uh, so yeah, there's my coffee, okay. Um, I just want to take a quick second here, talk about, like if you're a fairly new wood carver or, or an artist or whatever, I think it's always a good idea to get some business cards. You can look there, these ones are really old. These are my first, uh, here guys, look at, these are my first wood spirits, but you know, be creative when you make some business cards, put your info on the back, and then I got a little wood spirit story in here. For people to see what the wood spirits are about, how they're good spirits and they protect people in the forest through the paths and stuff like that. But make some cards, guys, because if you have cards to give people, they know you're more serious about your, your art. That's my opinion anyways. Okay, so on to the alien owl. Ah, I noticed last night I, cu I did cut these wings, these, fe these feathers on these wings a little bit deep, so I'm going to cut these down a bit more. If you can see, you know, I'll just take, I'll round them off a bit, you know, but I'm going to put some fine detail in here. Once again, I think I, I'm going to use, um, I'm not too sure about this part here, like flowing off his art. You know, I know his wing, wing would normally stop here, guys. This part's just kind of an abstract, but I think I'll leave it because whatever, right? So let's get, uh, let me get carved here. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to clean up these these wings, I think, round them off a bit, make them so they're not so high off from each other. Clean up all this stuff a bit and um, do the talons. All right, yeah. Alien L. Okay guys, in my opinion, I think that looks a lot better. <clears throat> it doesn't look so drastic like the wings are spread apart. This Each feather or wing or whatever you goddamn call them aren't spread apart this far. You know, so now they're a little bit, when I put the detail in there, it won't look like such a goddamn alien wing. Okay, so now let's draw these talons. You know, what I think, when I do a piece like this, you know, because my faces aren't that great and the wings are whatever... I like to try and do a nice talon because I think that's, you know, that will be kind of my highlight for the piece. But, I know how to do talons front on overhead view, but I'm not very good at doing the side view. You know, what? You hard to explain. So, whatever, George, just got, um, yeah, this is going to look silly. So, there's going to be one talon here, I guess. And, I don't know. Okay, now you can see a basic shape of a talon, right? So I'm just going to leave it there for now. I don't know if I'm going to put another one down here or whatever, right? Because you got to remember if you want to carve one into here now, then you tr you got, you're going to have to take all this away from the tree branch. So what I'm going to do now is round off this um, tree branch, okay? 
And yeah, whoop. Okay guys, what I'm gonna do here, I've carved deeper in here, so I'm gonna carve all this out now so this doesn't look bent, rounded in. So it doesn't look like this is carved out. You know, I'm just gonna make it deeper in here, right? Like I tell you guys before, the deeper your cuts, the better your piece is gonna look. I'm feathering it all the way. Okay, see what I meant by that is, you know, like I had to cut deeper in here because this silly little talon, whatever, I don't know what it is. I'll fix it up later. But um, I had to cut deeper in here because I kept on screwing that up. So you have to feather this away so it's not a big round cut. So it doesn't look like you've cut in there. It looks natural in the background, right? A nice slow uphill coming away from the cut. Nice slow uphill all the way, right? So, I don't know, I'm going to leave that town for now. It kind of makes sense a bit, I guess. So, let's see here. Let's put some uh, detail in these feathers, in these feathers now, okay? So, I'm going to I'm gonna use the same detailer. Here's a shout out to my buddy Phil that introduced me to this bit. I'm going to use the same burr as I do for the, the spirit hairs for these feathers. Or wings or whatever you want to friggin' call them. Okay, so I'm going to use this. If you order them from China, you get them in packs like this. You can find them on eBay. You know, this is, these are little ones. But you know, you get like 10 for 10 bucks or something, or 15 bucks. This is an aluminum cutter, or you can get steel cutters. See the bottom's flat? And you use it on the edge. See, you just do little tiny, do little quick little passes. You can slow it down, make it deeper. But this is awesome tool. And once again, shout out to Phil and Langley there. This is, uh, this is... A huge help and advanced me in my carving, bro, and um, we're very grateful for it. That's another thing, guys. Watch different channels. Watch different carvers because everybody can give you different tips. You know what I mean? Oh, this owl. I'm not a big fan of making animals because they got to look real to me. And it's got to look like an owl. This is whatever it is. It is. Okay? And I'm going to carve the moon in the top here, too. Okay? I haven't decided about the bottom. If I'm going to carve anything in there yet, but um, you see that mark there? You want to feather that mark away. Get rid of it. You know what I mean? See marks in there? Feather them away. Slowly carve them away. Boom. Because that looks like a cut mark. Okay, so I'm going to install this bit of my uh, Dremel flex shaft and uh, start doing the detail on the feathers. You know, you guys, when you're carving your piece or painting or doing whatever you do, always take your time to put the piece aside and stare at it and figure out what you want to do to it next, you know. It's not it's not a race. And it's not a competition. It's about you and being happy and enjoying what you're doing. You know what I mean? Enjoy what you do. Because if you're not enjoying doing it, don't do it. Move on to something else. Just be happy happy that you're alive and you found something that's making you happy I guess maybe huh Drinking some wood chips today, boys and girls. Yeah. Okay. So there you have it. I've done the detail on the the. You got some low points right in here. But guys, you know what I talk about? Like uh, putting your art piece aside and looking at it and decide changes you want to make. <laughs> well, check it out. 
I felt like this uh, owl was, was a little lonely owl. So I chucked this spirit buddy friend in there too. You know, that wing thing, it, it was a good idea, but it didn't work for me. So I took it out and carved a spirit in there. You know, that's what I'm good at is car well, getting better at carving the spirits. So that's what I carved in there. See how his beard's going to wrap around whoo, up in the wind here. It takes care of this area down here. I'm going to do a moon in the top. Top's going to be like a red moon. It's all going to be sad in here. I'm struggling with this talon today, guys. But you know what? You can see what it is from, from it right there. You know what I mean? So I got to use this uh, special burr here to do the spirits. Uh, beard now too this guy's this takes a while guys but the more cuts that you do the thinner the hairs look and the better it's gonna look for you you know what I mean okay I'll still I'll do that and then uh, we'll figure out where we still got to epoxy the eyes too right Hey guys, so at this point I got all the owl's feathers carved in, like, looks pretty rough right now, but once I take my solder to it, I got the whiz, the spirit's beard hairs cut in, so they're all kind of like whoosh, flowing around here. So, you know, I'm going to get the, I'm going to get a shitty part worth over, over with right now. I'm going to do some sanding before I move on to anything else, because if you leave the crappy stuff to do that you don't enjoy for the last, you might not do it. So just do the crappy stuff as you go because then it's already done. Okay. So once again, you can see in my description how I make this. This is a one inch, uh, sorry, one eighth nut and bolt with um, sandpaper here from a sanding belt, emery cloth. It's got the cloth back stuff. It lasts longer. Okay. I can fit this in my Dremel and use this at a real slow speed, guys, or you'll just rip up these pads like nothing. So turn your Dremel down. And then again, thanks to uh, my buddy Phil Langley here, Delt and uh, BC Langley. Ah, uh, damn it, I know the name of these things and I forget again. Ah, but anyways, these really do fine detail sanding, okay? So it's like they come to 80 grit and go up to like 2000 grit, okay? Ah, uh, somebody told me the name. I'm like, forget. This is what drives me nuts. Ah, so yeah. But turn your Dremel down real slow when you use these guys, because if it's too fast, all these little Brussels Brussels discs, Brussels discs. Anyways, yeah, I think they're bristle discs, bristle sanders, bristle sanders. But if you have your Dremel turn too fast, all these little tiny things here will just ting fly off. And it's a waste of money. So, really slow when you're using these guys. Really slow. Okay, so I just want to show you, I turned my Dremel on and it was full speed. And this is what I'm talking about, those pieces ripping off. Oops. You know, don't waste, try not to waste your money, guys. You know, because it all, it all adds up. Oh, I've wasted so much cash. Anyways, you can see, like, I got his eyebrows down in there with that little bit. That little, where is it? I showed, I showed you guys already, anyways, this little steel bit here on the, on edge. So I did all those feathers. That's how I did all his uh, beard hairs, and I sanded it down with that little dip, the bristle disc and this. So now I'm, what I'm going to do, is, as requested by my friends online here, I'm going to carve in the moon. It's going to be a quarter moon, so I'll do all that in a minute. I just got to have a coffee, refill my coffee, have a smoke, and stare at how I want to place the moon. Look, there's a little boat floating around. A mi tiny minuscule carved boat I did. I put it in my coffee and I'm going to drink it. 
Okay, so I'm all done with uh, my me time. Uh, let's uh, draw that moon in. Like I said, it's going to be just like a quarter moon. Uh, I can't do this in... Here, let me put the phone in its holder thing. So... I should be using, use a pencil guys, don't use a pen. I'm using this felt pen so you guys can see on this video here, but like I said, it's just kind of quarter of a moon. Pretend it's all the way around, you're just doing a quarter of it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just to give a visual effect, right? Okay, so, oh, phone's ringing. Okay, there you can see the moon's carved in, okay? See how it is off there? So this is what I try to explain lots in my videos. See all this, you can see it come up here and you can see a line here. You can see that bump there. Carve all that down flush inside there. So it doesn't like look like it's round in there and the moon's carved like you got a dip. Carve it all flush, flat in here. Same with here. Carve all this out, feather it away from the moon so it doesn't look like it, the moon's sinking in and just got quickly carved in there. Take it all away. Okay, so, yeah, whatever. Yeah! Guys, so I sold the wizard and I put that spar, one coat of spar varnish on it, but you can see how that stuff really darkens the carving. So I'm going to put uh, three coats on it. But what I want to say in this part here is, you know, never feel like you're underselling your art. Whatever kind of art you do. Especially, especially as a beginner. Because if you sell your stuff and you think you've sold it too cheap, you shouldn't think that way because you should be happy that somebody, at least somebody wants to buy your art. Do you know what I mean? Sell it, move on, create more art and the more art that you create the better you're going to get and the better you get the more you're going to be able to sell your art for i'm not saying i didn't get a good price for the wizard i um, i sold it to a family member so i gave him a great deal you know what i mean because it's going to stay in the family i'm happy with what i got paid but what I'm trying to say is don't feel like you're selling yourself short when you're selling your carvings for real cheap at the beginning. Like I say in lots of my other videos, I've given my first, tons of my first carvings away just to get my stuff out there. You know what I mean? You put one piece, you give a buddy a piece, he's going to put it in his house, other people are going to see that piece and if they like it, they're going to say, hey, where'd you get that? Then your buddy is going to say, oh, my buddy makes them. And then, buddy, buddy's buddy's going to want to buy one of your pieces. Just believe in yourself. You're going to get better. If you put your mind to it and practice, 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 progress, progress, progress. Rawr. Okay, guys. So, at this point in our piece, I think we're at a point where things are starting to matter. So, I got this all sanded down in here. It's sanded down in here, too. Look at that grain. Pretty cool, eh? Looks like it's part of the beard. Yeah, that's wicked. But anyways, I think we're at a point at a point where things matter. So what steps do you want to do next? Okay. So when I first started wood carving, I would always get my torch and to get the high points and low points. But when you got fine finer detail like this stuff, you can't use a torch and burn it because you're gonna burn all your detail away. Do you know what I mean? 
So I think I've come to the conclusion on this piece. I'm going to give this just a quick, light little burning. Just touch it with a torch. Just a little bit, okay? I'm going to burn in here good. All in here good, okay? I'm going to paint the moon red and sound it and burn it like how I'll do. I'll show you guys how I do that. And then I think I'll just stain it. Maybe? I, <laughs> I just don't know. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to burn in here. We still got to put the eyes in, guys. Here, where's my pen? I just friggin' have, here it is, on the floor. I think it's pretty crucial if you get the eyes out. Uh, let's put our dots in there for the eyes. There's one. There's two. I think the eyes are pretty good. Center. So I'm going to carve out inside the eyes here too. So when I pour the epoxy in, it will sit in the hole. Okay. Okay, guys. So how I'm going to carve these eyes in just a round circle. I got this cut so bit. It's an extreme. Okay. I'm my Dremel 4300. So you can see there's bits on the bottom. There's this a dovetail one. Okay. You can see this the cutters on the bottom too, right? So that's round, round enough for me anyways. So I'm just gonna go like this. Same in this, straight up and down, whatever. Okay guys, again, if anybody wants to, to know how to make my uh, special paint holders, just hit me up. I'll sell these suckers uh, only 10 bucks each, okay? Using dollar store paint, guys. So yeah, let's paint in the moon. Okay, so I burnt it pretty good in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little sander, wherever the friggin' it's this little guy, and I'm going to go around and touch up all the sanding, and you'll see how it make the grain pop and make it look kind of like a native looking. And I'm going to paint in his eyes black too, his nostrils, maybe a little bit of his mouth. Okay, I might even paint inside the eyes black. Okay guys, at this point I got everything cleaned up. I got in the owl eyes uh, painted black, got the sun red. You can see the burn behind the red because I put the red paint on and I rub it in with my hand. Let's see, yeah. <laughs> ah. Okay, so here you can see the beautiful wood grain in there by burning it and sanding after, lightly sanding it. See it up there too? But you know guys, be very careful burning your pieces because now look at the wood spirit, you know, he doesn't have as much detail as he did before. He's still, I think he's still all right, but the burning, and I lightly burnt him too, because this cedar's really soft, but I lightly burnt him, and it's taken away some of the detail. It's 
still all right, but you know what I mean? Well, that's another friggin' alien owl. <laughs> so now I'm going to use, uh, I got to go to the store and get some more epoxy. I'm going to use five minute epoxy, mix some orange paint into the epoxy and set the eyes. Okay. One, two. Should have made him just cut that right out, make it made him a cyclops owl. And then uh, inside of the orange epoxy, then I'm gonna mix up more black epoxy and I'm gonna put a drop on so that can act act as his pupils. Sorry guys, I forgot to uh, show how I poured that in there. I just uh, dipped the paintbrush in the epoxy and let it drip off into the eye sockets. I'm just doing this to make sure it grips all the edges. Watch it bleed out. Okay guys, so now I'm just going to let it dry. I'm going to walk away. At this point, you just walk away and let it dry. Let it dry. Let it dry. Dry. It's always good to keep some of your epoxy around that you mixed up so you can see how tacky it gets over time, right? You know, just leave it sitting there and see when it's dry enough for you to start working on your piece again or stand it up or whatever so sometimes you need to eat some dilly bars when you're waiting for your uh, epoxy to dry don't mind if I do okay guys so I think we've made all right progress on the owl like I said I'm not the best at making them so whatever it is what it is <clears throat> I've already um, give them one coat of lacquer okay I took it outside blasted it I had to go up to the store and get another can of uh, this um, Helsman Spar Urethane Varnish. Satin clear because I used the whole can to uh, do one coat on the wizard downstairs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, spar all in here so it's shiny. You know what I mean? I'm going to leave all this outside dull. Like I think I'm going to carve my name on the front this time. So. Anyways, that's what we'll do next. We'll just uh, go carve this, go paint this on. See, the eyes turned out all right, too. <laughs> uh, hoot! Okay, so this is the lacquer that I sprayed it with. It's been drying for about, I don't know, a couple hours. And here's the spar, it's already open. But for some of you that don't know, this is kind of hard to do holding the camera, your paintbrush, just wrap it up in a, in a ba plastic bag. When you're done with it, put it in the fridge. You know, this is what I've used earlier. For the, it should last a few days, so you don't keep on going through brushes. Silly little owl. Okay guys, so I'll just get this done and you'll I'll show you what it looks like when she's all dried up. So there it is finished guys. You know I just want to say that why I sprayed it with the lacquer first is because I used the lacquer as a, a coat uh, sealant for the wood. You know, this is only one coat of that spar varnish, and look how shiny it is. It's a little bit too shiny for my liking, so once the spar is completely dry, it's like not tacky or nothing, but once it's completely dry, I might spray something over top of it to make it a bit duller too, like some dull lacquer or something like that. But you know, this is the part of the video where I got to say thanks guys for, uh, if you made it to the end of the video, and um... 
Thanks to all my subs and all my new friends across the world. And I hope this, my carving can, you know, I don't think I'm that great. I'm learning just like you guys. But I hope uh, it can help somebody, right? Make it cheaper and easier for you because that's what it was about. Saving money on different carving tools and stuff like that. It's so shiny, it's really hard to see it. But the talon's not that great. <clears throat> I can just see a few errors in it. Like I carved a bit, a little, little bit too deep here. But I hope everybody's good and if it's sunny there, you're out there enjoying the sun. Take it easy. Sign it. Look at the beautiful grain of wood in here after burning it and sanding it. You know, look at it up here. Bring a little alien owl. Woot. My name's Grumpy Jesse, and I don't like owls. They say ho, ho, ho too much, and they're just too nosy. Go away, owls. Just go away.